Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And right at the start of the video, I want you to take a look at the equipment that we are using on this tank. We're using a Commander's Vision System inside the Scouting Slot. We're using a Bounty Exhaust System, which increases the concealment of the vehicle. We're using Vents, and we're using uh, a Directive that also increases the amount of time that an enemy vehicle is spotted. The reason why I wanted to highlight that right at the beginning is because it is going to be incredibly important for what we are trying to do today. Where we are trying to take the worst tier 10 tank, which I talked about earlier this year, the Reimatal Panzerwagen. And as I said in the video at the start of the year, of course it's German. And we're going to try and actually make it work today. Equipment 2.0 has revolutionized the way that you can be able to customize your tanks. And certain modules, such as the exhaust system, has enabled tanks with very good view range, like the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, to compensate for their poor concealment values. One of the reasons why the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen was always terrible in World of Tanks, and let me clarify just how terrible this vehicle is, it's the only tier 10 tank that averages less than a thousand damage per game. But it's not just about deal dealing damage when you're a light tank, right? This is also the only tier 10 tank with a sub 47% win ratio, with the next tank being pretty much about 1% win ratio better, and that would be the Sheridan at about 47.5%. Now the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen has been horrific because it has this stigma attached for being a bad tank, so a lot of the better players will not play it, and so it kind of is a self-fulfilling prophecy within that regard. But that's not just the reason. It's not because of its bad name and the fact that all of the better players will refuse to play the vehicle. It's also because the, the tank statistics are horrific. But Equipment 2.0 and the concealment bonus that you can apply through using that equipment that doesn't just affect your concealment when you're sitting still like a Kamenet, but also when you're moving, has allowed you, with the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, to be a lot more cheeky. But just because you can up your camera rating doesn't mean that you're perfect, because of course, a Rheinmetall Panzerwagen on the enemy team might be using a commander's vision system which can pierce through the bushes. More on that in a second. Let's focus on this bounty exhaust system that I'm using on this tank. It increases the concealment of the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen at all times, unless I'm firing, by 9%. And that is ridiculous, because the vehicles camo once you have a full concealment crew using a premium consumable you've got brothers in arms you've got all of those things is actually only 34 percent that is horrific that is barely better than an object 430u for example i think when it is sitting still to to be fair or even when it's possibly moving some of those low profile soviet medium tanks are incredibly sneaky and so a vehicle like this just had such horrific camo that you could never really truly play that light tank role. However, now with the exhaust system, you can pump up the vehicle's concealment from that kind of like 34% mark, and that's when you've got a very good crew on the tank, all the way up to like the 43% mark. And that is the difference as to a pre-equipment 2.0 EBR. And so that allows you to make far more aggressive plays in a vehicle like the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen than you ever could before. Now, it's not every light tank that can really do this, because, of course, if you pump up the concealment of the vehicle, you're making sacrifices in other areas of the tank. You might, for example, not take coated optics, or you might ta not take Commander's vision system. However, one thing that's really nice about this tank and the Sheridan, and that even though those two vehicles have the worst win ratios, the, the bottom and the second from bottom win ratio, They've actually got 420 meters base view range, which means that even if you're not willing to use a premium consumable and you don't have really fancy equipment or every single crew skill, you can still get up to a very decent view range without using coated optics on the tank. Previously, that wasn't such an advantage because maybe you would take a gun rammer on the tank um, or maybe you would just pump up your view range to a point where it really was kind of saturating and not entirely useful to go above that kind of 500 meters view range mark. But now with Equipment 2.0, the fact that you've got that 420 meters base view range and you don't have to use coated optics on this tank, but you still have good view range, means that instead you can use a commander's vision system which allows you to pierce through bushes, a lot like you saw me doing up towards the north of this map. And the fact that you could also take 
um, a module to increase your camera rating, like the exhaust system, means that I can sit in these areas and even though I'm not in a bush, these vehicles are not spotting me. When you have 43% camera rating, like the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen can achieve now, you can easily sit at this kind of 350 meters view range up to 400 meters view range. Uh, or should I say distance, not view range, but distance. And that means that their 450 meters view range is not going to be able to see you. Unless, of course, they're also uh, a very high view range tank, maybe using a commander's vision system as well. And so equipment 2.0, bizarrely enough, actually significantly boosted the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen because it was never a tank that really wanted to truly focus on its combat capacity but now it actually has the opportunity to invest in other areas that other vehicles can't ignore like the T100LT and that allows it to make gains and actually does it make it good on the battlefield? Well, at least it makes it less useless than it was. Take, for example, the uh, T100LT. That's a vehicle that has 390 meters base view range. And so even though I use bond-coated optics on mine, and I've got um, situational awareness, I've got recon on my commander, brothers in arms, and I use a premium consumable on the vehicle, at least on my main account, I'm only getting up to about that 513 meters view range mark. And if I wasn't to use coated optics on the tank, I feel like my view range would significantly drop off. The Rheinmetall Panzerwagen effectively trades coated optics now for the exhaust system to have the same concealment as all of the other light tanks. And while it doesn't help you when you're spotted, as let's be honest, you're a big fat slug of a tank that is easily hit and once you're hit, also overmatched very consistently because of its lack of armor. But it can allow you to do some cheeky things. You can get closer to your opponents before you get spotted and because you can take a commander's vision system on the tank now, you can pierce through those bushes and see the barns and see the Stritzwang 103Bs that otherwise would be quite sneaky. And unless I'm still spotted here, it actually looks like I have a free opportunity to sit in that bush, shoot through the bush, and to take advantage of just having the commander's vision system and the bounty exhaust system to improve my camera rating and to also be able to negate theirs inside the bushes. And Believe it or not, I'm actually playing this tank quite actively at the moment because I want to be able to get all of the field mods on the vehicle because I think that once you get to that final field mod and you um, can compensate even further for vehicles inside the bushes, just quickly I should mention, thank you so much to that Jagdpanzer E100 for getting me out of harm's way against that STR V103B and allowing me now to be able to make the flanking play against the E3. But by having all of the field mods, as I was saying, I do think that this vehicle could become like a little bit of a weirdo. And I'm actually very much looking forward to seeing just how many bushes we can completely negate when we start to take advantage of all the field mods. A lot like I talked about in my video last week with the mouse, taking a tank that's 180 tons and pumping it up now so it can go at 27 kilometers an hour allows you to do some pretty wacky things. I'm wondering if we can make a build for the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen that is working now but just add to it with all of the extra field mods and maybe this vehicle might surprise a few tanks. It's exactly what we've done so far in this game. We're using all of the strengths of this vehicle now because of the equipment system that this vehicle previously could only dream of. We wouldn't have been able to spot through the bushes in this scenario. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to stay hidden up towards the north. We certainly wouldn't have been able to sit at about 350 meters away from the T124 and the and the STB-1 towards the south, and it has allowed us to play the light tank role that this vehicle surely needs to. Light tanks aren't meant to be damage dealers, and while this vehicle, well, some of them are, but this vehicle, while it has the most accurate gun of all of the light tanks, and it has uh, probably the best high explosive rounds and decent ammunition loadout, there's a reason why it's still averaging 46.5% win ratio, uh, at least on the European, and I believe also on the Russian server. Now, we're able to just feel so much more confident in the tank, and I would thoroughly recommend trying out the equipment loadout that you saw me using. If you have it available, because you uh, use either the Battle Pass, or alternatively, maybe you're just able to get your hands on one at one time, try a Bounty Exhaust system on this tank. Put that in slot two, so you can still invest into the Commander's Vision system in your first slot, which has that scouting bonus, and then try and put vents in the other slot. I know that sounds a little bit weird. You might be thinking, what, you're not taking vertical stabilizers? You're not taking coated optics? Um, 
and you're, you're not taking a gun rammer on this vehicle? No, because I think that there are other better modules on this tank. And I think the vehicle's aim time, which is a very decent 1.41, and it's at least okay gun handling, means that taking vertical stabilizers on this vehicle would be a massive mistake. And once again, by being able to increase the vehicle's camera rating by pretty much about 30%, it allows you just completely to revolutionize the way that you can play the tank. Now, I should also mention that those exhaust systems can be used on certain vehicles like the Manticore to pump that vehicle's camera rating up to about the 55% mark. And so possibly you could use that as well there. But I feel like a vehicle uh, such as the Manticore, which doesn't have this 420 meters view range, I do feel like I sacrifice a lot of the view range of the vehicle to be able to achieve that. And I thought I was going to full burn the 60 TP there. And I have to admit, I was a little bit cheeky. I was possibly thinking about, you know, getting one of those cheeky screenshots at the end of the game. And how inconsiderate of the 60 TP to not full burn. And I had to turn around to be able to engage him again. So look, the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen. I have found uh, a way to at least make this tank reasonably bearable. Do I still recommend it? Oh, oh, hell no. This vehicle, it's still awful. And you have to put yourself at a massive disadvantage compared to pretty much every other light tank in the game if you want to play it. However, Equipment 2.0 undoubtedly has allowed you to mitigate some of the extreme weaknesses that the vehicle has, and also to kind of capitalize on some of the strengths that it had with view range by forfeiting using coated optics and now having an extra equipment slot effectively that is now useful with the new equipment. So an ace tanker here for a Rheinmetall Panzerwagen with 1,312 base experience. I think that even if I got a couple hundred less than that, it would probably still be an ace in this tank. That's how badly the vehicle is played. And we managed to get ourselves a tasty 10,000 combined in the tank without firing a lot of gold rounds. We made a profit with or without a premium account. And even if we didn't have the best damage potential in this tank, because we were able to just dictate the combat by always staying on the fringes and using our enhanced camera rating due to that exhaust system, we actually end up doing the most damage in this battle as well. So all in all, the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen, as I said, try it out the way that I suggested. I'm not, guar I'm not guaranteeing that you're suddenly gonna find an incredible vehicle to play, but if you wanna put yourself in the position of being an underdog, it, it can be quite sweet to surprise your opponents and come out on top compared to some pesky wheeled vehicles or even a T100 LT. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching the video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And this week you've all voted to see one of the original tier 10 heavy tanks in the game. It's the IS-7. So let's see if we can play like an absolute idiot in this arguably idiot-proof tank and rush into the fray. And also I'll show you some classic heavies in the game, including tanks like the IS-3. So really looking forward to seeing you all live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.